has done it all. Hard-hitting investigative exposés, informative consumer reports, revealing celebrity interviews. But even she will admit she wasn't fully ready for her latest assignment. We sent her back to school, race car driving school, a brave woman. <laughs> Barbara, I certainly wasn't, and I'm still to this day not sure whether this was my big career break or actually punishment. Most of us have wondered at one time or another what it's like to drive at high speeds under high stress. Well, fasten your seatbelts and hang on. You're about to enter the world of a race car driver. President of an office supply company in New York. I work in accounting. I work as a bell captain at the Albany Marriott. Fred and Bob Reddell's thing are both retired. I'm an actor, stand up comedian. I'm president of uh, one of the largest uh, dry cleaning and laundry valet plants in Manhattan. And I want to be a stuntman. What do these people have in common? They've all wondered what it would be like to slide behind the wheel of a precision racing machine, gunning around the track at hair-raising speed. And they all got to live their fantasy at the Skip Barber Racing School in Lime Rock, Connecticut. For $1,850, the Skip Barber School claims they can teach anyone how to be a race car driver, including me. Well, I've got my helmet and my racing suit. I've certainly worn a jumpsuit before, but never one that was flame retardant. This is about as ready as I'll ever be. The three-day course teaches the fundamental techniques of racing. The day started with a little classroom instruction. So what you want to do is not hit the throttle, but allow the rear of the car to essentially scrub speed just by the sliding it's getting. Fifteen other students and I delved into the world of torque, gears, radius of turns, downshifting, and a bunch of other stuff. But I'm sure you don't care about this. You want to see the cars. So after class, it was on to pit lane for a look at the Formula Fords. I know what you're thinking. They look like go-karts. But these $25,000 cars can go up to 120 miles an hour. The first step was learning how to put on the seatbelt. Now, if it starts to hurt when you tighten this up, then it means we need to tighten it a little more. Okay, because this is not comfortable. Then we were assigned our cars. I got number 68. This is that, huh? It's tight in here. At this point, I have to admit, I was a little scared. One of the instructors, Arby, came over and gave me a pep talk. How you doing? Hi. I'm a little nervous. Well, that's okay. Everybody is. I get nervous every time before I go on a race. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad to hear it. No problem. And I was just asking, no one ever gets hurt on this track, right? No. Okay, no one good. ever gets hurt. You might break a nail. <laughs> I'm not worried about them. I don't really have any to begin okay. with. Okay, I'll admit I had a slight problem at first. I couldn't get the car to move. I don't think I'm in gear. It's not in gear? Whoops, sorry. Yep. Ah, that does it. <laughs> After hearing me grind their car into first gear, I'm sure the instructors were a little concerned. It's not about me, about their car. The first exercise was the slalom course. I was racing. Maybe crawling is more an accurate description. I know, I know, I wasn't exactly putting the pedal to the metal, but I thought I was doing okay until my car overheated. Not for going too fast, but for going too slow. This is really embarrassing. <laughs> Too hot because I've been going too slowly or too hot because of the gears? Um, going faster would have got more air through it. Not that it's your fault, though. Uh -huh. Don't. Oh, thanks. No, it really, it isn't. I was just getting the hang of it, that last one. Determined not to make a fool of myself, I decided to lay some rubber and see what this baby could do. Go, go, go! Until... No. After regaining my composure from the skid, we finished up with these simple exercises. It was time to do some laps around the track. Keep your exit speed out of the corner 
is the single most important thing to a good lap. You don't let the clutch out of the idling engine and you don't spin the car. Again. Well, I'm getting pretty good at the spin. Right, well, you are getting real good at that. <laughs> she turns pro, she's got a little work. We're getting there though. Although my classmates might have been doing a little better than I was, I had to assume no one was about to quit their day job. I think everyone was surprised how technical it all was. Tell me some of the new words you've learned out here. Double down, double clutching downshifting. That's always a frustrating thing to learn. Can you explain what that is? <laughs> What's this thing double clutching everyone's making such a big deal about? Okay, as you approach a turn, you're going to want to slow the car down, so you touch the brakes. Actually, you push uh -huh. very hard on the brakes. You move your right foot over. Uh -huh. You depress the clutch, put it in neutral, let the clutch out, get the gas, and then put it into gear. All at the same time? All at the same time. It's just one fluid motion. But the big question remained. How did I do? You did pretty great. As a general rule, women come into the school more tentative than the guys. You know, they're less caught up in the whole machismo, you know, I'm going to be real tough out there. Uh, and they tend to listen up more. And uh, in, as an end result, by the end of the school, most of the time, the women are the better students. It was a long, exhilarating, exhausting day. Driving number 68 into pit lane at the end of the day, I felt, well, this is not a sport for everyone. But I have to tell you, I'm pretty glad it's over with. <laughs> I don't know that they pay me enough for this. <laughs> In retrospect, I did learn a lot. I learned that I will never be a race car driver and that I prefer cars with a little more cushioning. But I also developed a new great respect for the life in the fast lane. It's exciting, it's challenging, and it requires a great deal of skill and concentration. And Barbara, I have to especially thank my producer, Jason Rapp, not only for his work on the piece, but also for calming me down enough to know that I did learn something at the end of the day. Well, the instructor said you learned something, so you weren't a foolish woman out there just doing silly pratfalls. But there were other women out there with you. Oh, uh, absolutely. There were other women. And one thing you know, that I have to say is thank God we weren't racing each other because I never actually had to look in the rearview mirror the whole time, and that made me feel a lot better. How did the other people do? How did the women who came on just as regular folks, not as TV reporters, do? Well, I think the people who were really enthusiastic about it because they wanted to be race car drivers, some of them actually were overzealous and had a little hard time at the end, at the beginning, but at the end they were doing pretty well. And the women actually, as he said, really did do well. They That's concentrated great. and it worked. Thanks, Taryn. It's a lot of fun.